there are four types of hypersensitivity. The first one is the immediate hypersensitivity reaction. That's what we usually call allergies. The second one is an antibody-mediated hypersensitivity reaction. The third is an immune complex-mediated reaction. And the fourth is mediated by T cells. So let's look at the first one. This is um, what's going on when somebody has hay fever, when they have asthma, when they have an anaphylactic reaction, and it is mediated by IgE. Anaphylaxis is a serious uh, reaction. It's an exaggerated systemic immune response, so the whole system is responding. It can be triggered by insect stings, food allergies, or drug allergies but it requires a previous exposure and sensitization to the uh, to um the substance uh it doesn't just happen first time it's one of the subsequent times what we see with it is bronchospasm uh air's not getting in we may see wheezing with that flushed skin and itching that's the hives angioedema sudden swelling of the face, the mucous membranes, the neck, the hands, the feet. With anaphylaxis, there's a dilation of the vascular smooth muscles. There is a bronchial smooth muscle constriction. And there's increased vascular permeability. So with the dilation of the vascular smooth muscles, well, the um, we, that's vasodilation. We'll see hypotension because there's a bigger pool, same amount of blood, but a bigger pool that's less pressure on the cell, the vessel walls that can lead to shock and death. The bronchial smooth muscle constriction, it's hard to get air in and out. That's inadequate oxygenation. We'll have damage to the tissues and we may end up again with death. Increased vascular permeability, fluid leaks out of the tissues causing edema. It gets bad enough, it starts to leak into the lungs. That's pulmonary edema. you got fluid in the lungs, you can't breathe, and you end up with death. How do we treat it? Well, we've got epinephrine that will restrict, excuse me, relax the bronchial smooth muscles. So it's easier to breathe. It'll decrease the vascular permeability, so you have less fluid leaking out. And it can treat some of the cardiovascular problems associated with the hypotension. Bronchodilators are used to relax the, the bronchial smooth muscles so the air can get in and out easier. Antihistamines reduce the itching and again, the vascular perme permeability so that the fluid stays in the vessels. And if needed, people can be given fluids. Now we're talking IV fluids here to restore their blood pressure. Bring the volume up so we don't have that hypotensive and shock response. If the anaphylaxis worsens and we've been able, unable to treat it, a person may end up being intubated and on mechanical ventilation to keep their oxygen levels up, to keep them breathing. Okay, type 2 hypersensitivity. That's cytotoxic. That means it's toxic to the cells. And it's mediated by IgG or IgM. And it usually involves blood. When you hear of an allergic reaction with blood, think type 2. That's the transfusion reactions. RH disease, and some drug reactions fall in here as well. Let's talk about RH isoimmunization. This is an antigen-antibody re immune response. The antigen in the body, on the blood cells, reacting to antibodies that are coming in, foreigners that are coming in. It is um, dangerous to the fetus when it is a secondary immune response. Remember, we're back to memory cells here. 
the primary response is not as big a deal. It's the secondary response that's strong and fast and dangerous. So we have an Rh negative mother. That means she has no Rh negative um, factor on her red blood cells. When she comes in contact with an Rh positive fetus, that means the baby has the R, the fetus has the Rh factor. Her body makes antibodies. Now the two blood systems don't interact normally, but during the birth process there may be some interactions that come in contact with each other, and that's when this usually happens. The primary response, the primary immune response, is not usually the problem. It's usually fairly mild. The problem arises when it's another fetus, a second fetus, or a third or fourth Rh positive fetus, the secondary res immune response kicks in. Her body's already been sensitized. Her antibodies know what to do. And they go to attack the fetal blood. Antibodies are small enough they can cross the placental barrier and break down the fetal blood. Effects on the fetus newborn? Well, we've got a possibility for anemia. We've broken down all that blood. Um, well, the blood carries the oxygen. You don't have oxygen going to places. You end up with brain damage, hearing loss, cerebral palsy, and other issues. Okay, type 3 hypersensitivity. That's an immune complex mediated reaction. Um, again, it's an antigen antibody, but they're free-floating. They're not attached to the blood cells. They're not attached to a specific cell or organ. An example of this is lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Type 4, that's cell-mediated. It's um, T cells are the things that are mediating what's going on here. And again, it's cytotoxic. It's, it's toxic to the cells. Um, it may be some viral reactions. But there's also the delayed type hypersensitivity. The body has previously been sensitized to an agent. It's exposed to it again, so we get an allergic reaction. Remember, this is a secondary immune response. This happens when you have a positive tuberculin test. That's what's going on. Also here is the allergic contact dermatitis, such as latex allergies or poison ivy. We have hypersensitivity pneumonitis. That's uh, when someone is chronically breathing in or just breathing in particular particulates in the air, um, such as mold. We end up with a shortness of breath and coughing. <laughs> 